Let's continue building our game. Time to create a menu. Inside a div with the class menu, we add a heading and two buttons. Add it in the app next to the canvas. We add some CSS to make the title white and the menu fix on top of the screen, centered, full width and height. We make the background black, transparent and use backdrop filter to add some blur. We do a bit of styling on the button, but it's minimal. Here is what we have so far. Let's prepare our game engine. We declare a game states object to go from the menu to the game and to game over. We then add a game state by default to menu and on start game we set it to game. Now in our menu component we can get start game and game state from the store. If we are not in the menu state we will add the menu hidden class. On press of our button, we want to start the game but in a specific mode. I use an object as the parameter to be able to easily add some if ever we need to. Let's adjust the start game to receive the mode and to set it in our state. Add the menu hidden class in the CSS, we'll set the opacity to 0 and disable pointer events. We also add a transition on all to unblur smoothly and fade out our menu. We can remove the automatic start game in the experience as we want to start it from the menu. Perfect, but when I try to jump with the spacebar, it changes the characters. It's because the button is focused and spacebar triggers it. We can disable the button once we are not in the menu state. In canvas spots, where we display our characters, we hardcoded the fact that we are in hiragana mode. Now we can get it from the store and conditionally display katakana or hiragana. We also see four characters instead of three on the first level. That's because I made a typo in the generate game level. And the option should be 3 plus i and not 3 plus 1. Now hiragana and katakana modes work well. The game is based on the sound played. To get all Japanese sounds, I used AWS Poli and ah. saved all of them as mp3. Add them in public sounds kanas. Now in our store, let's create a simple play audio function. It will take a relative path, create the audio object and automatically play it. We call it in start game and next stage with the current kana to find. Yeah. Works well. Time to focus on the game mechanics. When we fall, we want to go back to the stage. To do so, add a rigid body to the floor with collider set to false to manually create it. A fixed type to prevent it from moving and a name to know on what our player landed. Then we create a very long cuboid collider below the floor with the sensor type. The documentation explains that a sensor will just help us to detect collision without having any impact on the physics. Now on our character collider rigid body, Add an on intersection inter event, get the other from the parameters, and check if the name is equal to void. If it's the case, we'll call a function named reset position. In this function, we will set the translation back to zero. It works well, but the velocity from the fall is still applied. We can set a linval to a zero vector as well to stop it. Now let's handle when we touch the kana spots. On the rigid body, add an on collision enter event and call kana touch function with the current rendered kana. We don't check what touches it because we only have our player that move. Otherwise, we will check the collided object name. Let's get kana touched from our store and create that function. To get the current kana, we use get, and that's another function from just end, to have access to the current state properties. If the touched kana is the right one, we call the next stage function. Else, we play the audio of the kana we touched. That will help the player knows its mistake and we increase the number of wrong answers we did. Let's declare it. Se. Ki, ki. You. Works well, but we want to go back to the center after a good or a wrong answer. To be able to execute 3JS code without creating re-renders of our React components, we will wrap our store with subscribe with Telector. This is the main reason why we are using Docent. In our character controller, we are now able to use the subscribe function from use game store. When our first variable changes, the reset position function passed as a second parameter will be called. We wrap it in a use effect. That way it will subscribe once and unsubscribe when the release function from use effect is called. That writing is exactly the same but easier to read. You. Mm. Mm. 
Nice, it works well, we can now almost do a complete game. If you noticed, we had a rendering rigid body issue due to a Kana in two stages. Because our key is the same, it rendered it at the previous position, and it's not what we want. Let's add the current stage to the key in our map. We also want to prevent to have to guess the same Kana in a same game. In our generate game level, we can add another array named good Kanas and check if our Kana isn't already in or continue fighting a random one. And once we find the good one, we push it to our array. Let's also add a text in the middle story to display the current Kana on the scene. We get the current Kana from the store. Nah. Looks nice, no? Time to prepare the game over. In the next stage function, if we are at the last stage, let's update our game state to game over. We also prepare a go to menu function to go from the game over screen to the menu. Let's build our game over screen in the menu with a heading and a play again button. Add the scores classes to be the same than in the menu in the CSS. Now when we finish the game, the game over screen shows and we can hit play again. Let's polish a bit the game experience by adding cast shadow to the character. And we will make the camera follow a bit our player to make the experience less static. We get the character world position and set the exposition of the camera to the character. And the character position plus 14 on the z-axis. Of course, try with whatever you prefer. Then we declare a look at vector with the character x and z position, while the y stay at 0 to avoid moving the camera up when it jumps and we call camera.lookat to our new vector. Now we can see the character shadow and the camera moves nicely. A game isn't a game without proper sound effects. I found this Japanese website with common royalty-free sound effects. I chose many and put them in the sounds folder. Let's update the play audio function with a second optional parameter named callback. We add an event listener on the audio to call the callback when the audio ends. Now let's first play our start sound, then play the Kana audio. Add the congratulations sound at the end of the game, the good and correct sounds when a good answer is made, the wrong and fail sounds when a wrong one is made, and also a false sound and ganbate, which means to do your best when you fall. Start! Hmm? It adds a lot of life to the game. Speaking of game, let's add traps. Create a kicker component only displayed if the game started and if we are at the third level. This is exactly the same component I made in my React Physics tutorial, so feel free to watch the video if you don't understand the physics logic here. Add it to the experience and let's play! Start! No. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this second part of the tutorial. If it's the case, please hit the like button as it really helps this channel grow and be more visible to other developers. The next part will be dedicated to polish the experience and making it look great, for the models, character animation and proper lighting. Now, if you still have some energy to increase your React Refiber skills, you can jump to the next tutorial available here.